Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and I think we figured out the plot of Marvel Studios' Fantastic Four movie from this official cast announcement image in this image alone. I know what you're gonna say, Boss, it's just a Valentine's Day card, it isn't even a trailer. But this image was created by an actual artist, and not AI, thank God, artist Wesley Burt. Very talented person, but someone working with Marvel Studios' head of visual development, Ryan Minderding, who really is the visionary behind pretty much every character design that we see in the MCU. So what we're seeing here is pretty much official concept art for this movie. And in this art, they put a number of visual clues in there for us to find and to speculate on. So from it, we were able to determine the time period, the exact year, where the Fantastic Four had been all this time, what era of Fantastic Four were adapting, the aspects of the origin story this film will include, how they're connected to MCU history, and what it really means that Herbie is in this. And from all that, logically extrapolate what threat they're probably facing in this movie. I mean, hey, you're talking to a guy who figured out Loki from three seconds of teaser footage and the plot of Endgame from a photo of a cake. It's like I was made for this. All right, let's go. So Marvel Studios decided to ruin Sony's Valentine's Day by confirming their fantastic forecast so that the internet would be talking about that instead of going to see Madam Web. Little did they know we would be obsessed with Madam Web for entirely different reasons. But in this February 14th announcement post, Marvel Studios confirmed that their Fantastic Four lineup would be Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, Vanessa Kirby as Susan Storm, the Invisible Woman, Joseph Quinn as Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, and Evan Moss Backrack as Ben Grimm, the Thing. We also learned that the movie would now be coming out on July 25th, 2020. 25, swapping places with Marvel's Thunderbolts, which has moved up to May 2nd, 2025, making July 2025 a huge month for movies, with Jurassic Park 7 on July 2nd, 2025, and Superman Legacy on July 11th, 2025. Now, I went into the Fantastic Four cast and the implications from these choices in another video, but let's look closely at this photo. Ben Grimm is reading a Life magazine, which many of you immediately identified as the December 1963 cover showing President Lyndon B. Johnson. We also have the way these heroes look. Light blue costumes with the four on the chest, the white boots. These are specific to the 1960s appearance of the Fantastic Four from Stan Lee and artist Jack Kirby. But also the film's new logo with a retro 60s typeface and the way Marvel is rendered in the style of Hollywood's historic Cinerama Dome, which opened in what year? 1963. So we can determine from this that the Fantastic Four film will be set at least part in the year 1963, which gives greater significance to the Universe 838 John Krasinski, Reed Richards, and Multiverse of Madness. Fantastic Four. Didn't you guys chart in the 60s? Yeah, Reed smiled at that. When I broke down this movie back in May 2022, I talked about how this is a reference to other Fab Four 60s bands like the Beatles, and the fact that in the 2016 Doctor Strange movie, Surgeon Stephen Strange had an encyclopedic knowledge of music history and when songs and albums were released and when they charted, so Doctor Strange was just kind of using that to diss Reed. But I also speculated that it could have been a meta clue that Marvel Studios' Fantastic Four movie could could be set in the 1960s, as director Peyton Reed said that before he directed the Ant-Man movies for Marvel Studios, he pitched to Fox a Fantastic Four movie that would be set in the 60s in the style of the Beatles movie, A Hard Day's Night. I've long theorized that the MCU Fantastic Four did exist in the MCU history during the 60s decade, but were just kind of seen as an obscure group of scientists that faded from history as more explosive events in the MCU history just kind of buried them out of everybody's memory. But when I theorized that from Doctor Strange's Didn't You Guys Chart in the 60s line, I'm telling you, I was mocked, mocked. Like, I got people still coming after me for this. It's like Mephisto, Taylor Swift, Bindu and Ahsoka, and then this. But based on this announcement photo and the fact that Matt Shackman is directing this film, I'm almost certain that the Fantastic Four movie is going to be set at least partly in the 60s. Like, that is where these characters started, and that like Steve Rogers, they will have been displaced from time, and then they'll reappear in the present day of the MCU. I don't think we're talking about a multiverse scenario where they were in a different universe. I think they were here, right under our noses in the history we've been living in. Matt Shackman directed the episodes of WandaVision, in which the first two were set in the 1960s, and he proved himself to have an astute attention to detail when it comes to 60s production design and tone. As a sitcom child actor from Growing Pains, who grew up on the sets where shows like Bewitched were shot, this is something Matt Shackman just has a unique insight into, and that kind of accuracy is not easy to pull off. Like a different director, Matthew Vaughn was given the same task with X-Men First Class, and when we broke down that movie recently for our X-Men Stick Snake rewatch, while it is an excellent movie that totally holds up, the movie is filled with various historical anachronisms. Precise accuracy with the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis was obviously not that big of a priority for him. But now that we live in an MCU that has elevated precision with historical timelines, with a TVA that tracks everything from Pompeii to Alcatraz breakouts to D.B. Cooper down to the millisecond as the governing body both for the Loki series
series and the upcoming huge movie Deadpool and Wolverine, Marvel Studios just can't really afford to fudge this stuff anymore. When the studio's head of visual development points to two different 1963 Easter eggs and some concept art, they're setting it in 1963. But when we're talking about Matt Shackman, it's not just his background with WandaVision, he also co-created the show Monarch Legacy of Monsters for Apple TV Plus with Matt Fraction, the director of Marvel's Hawkeye. And that show really codifies the exact 20th century timeline of the Monarch organization within Warner Brothers MonsterVerse with insane precision. And it explores the concepts of characters from the 1950s slipping through a rift in space-time to return decades later. So Matt Shackman loves time dilation and government cover-ups. Leaving the house this time of year can mean getting cold and wet. But if you have a Bond Charge infrared sauna blanket, you've got something warm and rejuvenating to come home to. Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life, whether you want to sleep better, have more energy, or just de-stress, which is where the infrared sauna blanket comes in. Bond Charge's sauna blanket raises your heart rate so you burn calories while you relax to help your body release endorphins and leave you feeling relaxed and euphoric. It's super easy to set up, heats quickly, so now you can get Get the same relaxing benefits you would from a sauna while reading a book for 40 minutes on your couch. Bond Charge's infrared sauna blanket has free shipping worldwide and a 30-day free trial, so you can test it out risk-free. Go to bondcharge.com slash new rockstars and use coupon code NR15 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash new rockstars and use coupon code NR15 to save 15%. So in this image, we also have this portrait on the wall of Ben Grimm posed in an astronaut suit, which I assume they included to just have some appearance of Eben Moss backtrack to confirm that he would be in this while also signaling to viewers that the film will maintain the thing's iconic orange rocky humanoid appearance. Seeing Ben Grimm as a NASA astronaut is significant because NASA suspended their manned astronaut program in 2011. Even in the MCU continuity, SWORD director Tyler Hayward told Monica Rambeau in WandaVision episode 4 that the agency ended their astronaut program during and after the blip in that episode, like all WandaVision episodes, were directed by Matt Shackman. Photos of astronauts like this just kind of recalls a specific era of NASA from the 1960s when America would often see portraits of astronauts like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins and would show up on magazines because it was important for the U.S. government to lionize astronauts as celebrities during the space race as a propaganda campaign against the Soviet Union. We should also note that the reason Life put LBJ on the cover of the December 1963 issue was because he had just assumed the presidency after the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And it might be unrelated, but X-Men Days of Future Past established that John F. Kennedy was a mutant and that Magneto tried to stop his assassination by curving the bullet. Now, I'm not saying that JFK's mutant status is MCU canon, at least not yet, but with Deadpool joining the MCU through the TVA and meddling with the Fox X-Men film continuities, it's just kind of a historical facet that the MCU could adopt in the future. But perhaps the most important cameo in this image is this little cutie, Herbie. This is the robot handing Ben a mug. Herbie, or humanoid experimental robot, B-type, into integrated electronics was a character originally created for the 1978 animated series The New Fantastic Four when they needed a replacement for Johnny Storm because he was optioned for a solo film that never happened. There was an urban myth that they replaced the Human Torch due to fears that kids might try to emulate him by setting themselves on fire. That was not true, but fun fact, in Back to the Future, the time machine was changed from a refrigerator to a DeLorean because they were worried kids would suffocate themselves by locking themselves in fridges. By the time Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out, they didn't really care, probably because in 2008 kids were too fat to fit in fridges. Anyway, Stan Lee pitched the idea of a robot sidekick, and this was actually Jack Kirby's final creation for Marvel. So after this point, Herbie was integrated into Marvel Comics lore, where we learned he was built by Reed Richards and Master Czar of the Xandarians, with his function being to aid in their search for Galactus. Actually, later we learned that Xandar's computers had contained the consciousness of Dr. Sun, and he had nested in Herbie's body, using Herbie as a sleeper agent. So don't drink from that mug, Ben! No! So this early confirmation from Marvel's head of visual development that Herbie is going to be in this film suggests that this 2025 Fantastic Four film might be focused on Galactus, which would line up with what scoopers like Jeff Snyder are claiming that the studio is looking at Galactus as the film's villain and that they want Javier Bardem for the role. I think the reason we can trust Jeff a little bit more on this one is, is that he did name these four actors months ago. So whatever his source was for that might also know what they're talking about when it comes to Galactus and Javier Bardem. So assuming the Fantastic Four started in the MCU as astronauts in the 
1960s and that they had returned to earth after being hit with like cosmic radiation and became the blue suited superheroes in the 60s where have they been since then again could they come from another reality in the multiverse no i think it's better for marvel to say that they existed within our continuity that they connect to the world that we know maybe we're even friends with hank pym and they just didn't really have a chance to be popular enough to stay within the historical record or maybe even the government covered up their existence i think one of their early adventures took them through a rift or a dimensional portal to cause them to time dilate to the present day perhaps a trip through another dimension maybe like the negative zone or just like an incursional rift like the ones capable of being opened by the quantum bands because those took kamala khan through time within a single universe it could have been the same thing that took the fantastic four through time now josh brolin recently told comicbook.com that he's heard through the grapevine that thanos is returning to the mcu and in another video i speculated that we might actually see thanos's destruction of xandar from infinity war as an opening prologue scene to this fantastic four movie because we might learn that the xandarian world mind wanted thanos to take the power stone as their best hope to stave off galactus the reason i speculate on that is that we know the planet xandar had a planetary shield that thanos would not have been able to break into unless he had someone on the inside helping him and the only one on the inside who would help him who would have control over the planetary shield would have been that world mind now the screenwriters of infinity war and endgame actually planned on using nova richard Ryder from the planet xandar in that kind of silver surfer role the one who crash lands in the sanctum and warns about thanos coming instead of bruce banner which is what they ended up doing with glenn close as the voice of the world mind in his head so perhaps marvel could use that plot line a surviving xandarian world mind instead of dr sun as the disembodied entity living on in this little robot of herbie as he is canonically xandarian technology and herbie is the one to open the rift to bring back the fantastic four to the present day to help them protect earth as galactus approaches herbie i think is going to be the key to it all he's like wally just kind of waiting for eve to wake up he's waiting for the right moment to close the loop on this time slippage and bring his friends back to the present day so what did we learn from this photo 1963 astronaut program time slippage herbie as a potentially forever loyal wally caretaker keeping the light on for his four friends and galactus that's what i got from this photo from marvel studios fantastic four also happy valentine's day hey support our channel by grabbing one of our great shirts at nerdriot.shop it's hard to tell from this angle but we got this new badass wolverine and deadpool team up face off shirt you gotta grab one of these nerdriot.shop best way to support what we're doing here subscribe to all three of our channels new rock stars the break room and the deep dive i'm eric voss thanks for watching bye